In this video, we're presenting the new Anycubic Mono 2, printing, rolling stock and checking what the performance is of such entry-level printer. We're also printing matching loads of lumber cargo and we're running real-life tests on the layout with a home printed car. and welcome to this video in which I've been given the opportunity to present a brand new entry-level uh, 3D printer from Anycubic. It's the Mono 2, which is the follower of the Mono 4K. And the Mono 4K was a huge success. Uh, it was the, one of the most sold uh, 3D printers on, on Amazon. So this new Mono 2 has a lot to live up to. <laughs> um, talking about uh, the 4K. I remember when I did the presentation for 4K, was it like two years ago or something like that? Then that one was uh, at uh, 400 dollars or 400 euros. Uh, this new one, Mono 2, is uh, now uh, on, on introduction sales for 189. So less than half price compared to the previous model. And also I remember when I did that presentation because there was nothing to, <laughs> to print for model railroading. Uh, I, I searched the Thingiverse and found this bicycle. Uh, and, and rail bike which I based my presentation on but there were really not much to work with and it, that's a huge difference compared to now when when uh, you know there are like a, a thousand HO scale models uh, at a reasonable cost just to do to click download and, and print for for your own need and as many as you like so it's uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, a lot massive development going on here and I, I'm starting up by putting up a link both to the printer where you can uh, look at it check the specifications and buy it you can buy it either from any cubic uh, website or from Amazon whatever you prefer and there is also a link to the, the site where you find the 3D models we're going to use in this presentation plus tons of other 3D models which might come in handy for you on, on your model railroad. Uh, we're going to start with uh, um, printing some stuff in this Mono 2. There is a, a huge benefit with this compared to the Mono 4K and that is the bigger print plate. It's not much that differs actually but it makes a huge difference because now you can print all the rolling stock. I mean cars, stake cars, box cars, uh, bulk cars. I would say up to 1961, something like that, because then they were not longer than that, most of the cars, uh, and with very good quality. So we're going to do that in this video and compare uh, what, what uh, the quality looks like on an entry level printer. Uh, so we're starting with that, printing, uh, rolling stock, printing cargo to it, and then we're going to have a look in the end on the settings and the technical bits and pieces that you need to be on top with uh, when you get the printer uh, to get the same result as, as I came to here. So uh, <laughs> let's get on with the printing. This is the Anycubic Photon Mono 2, powered up and ready to go. So on the touch display we're hitting print and then select the object we want to print, which is this chassis for a steak car in Swedish style and the print head goes into the resin and the print process starts. So this takes a few hours and when ready it looks like this and the printout is ready for cleaning. So we're removing the print head and then removing the printout from the print head into the wash and cure machine. So now it's going to be washed four minutes uh, with alcohol so all uh, the excess resin goes away from the model and when that is ready it looks like this. So I'm leaving this to dry for a few minutes and then I start to peel away all of the supports. It might look confusing and a lot but actually it's a pretty straightforward process. I just cut away all the supports around the edge of the model like this i'm using a scalpel for this and when done well then it's just to 
bend that uh, plate a bit and your model will come off just beautifully. Now, besides the chassis, we also need to print the board and uh, the flatbed floor, the neem couplings, the buffers and the stakes, of course. Leave to dry overnight and then post cure for four minutes. Now, with a 120 grit sanding paper, we're sanding away the th remaining supports of the chassis. With that done, we can fit the buffers in place. Now, one should be curved and the other flat. So the one you see here to the left is curved and this one's flat. So make sure you get them right. After that, it's time for the neem mechanism. I put a few drops of oil on that, uh, both on top and on those uh, curved edges, which will slide uh, towards um, against the, the chassis. With those two in place, we glue the board in place. For that, I use fast set glue. Same I use for fixing the buffers to the chassis. And at the same time, I glue the flatbed floor in place. Besides from the print parts, we also need to wind a neem springs. For that, I use stainless steel wire, which is 015 millimeter thick. You can also use music wire or piano wire for this purpose. I typically buy this wire from Wish. I have a link in the video description where you can find it. Then besides from that, you also need this 1.5 millimeter piano wire or mu music wire. You can buy that at your hobby dealer or hobby store. Then I fix the thin wire to the thicker wire with a piece of tape. And then I insert that into my screwdriver or drilling machine, whatever you have available. And then I fix it into a screw wrench like this. Now hold the wire firmly uh, with some good pull force. I recommend using gloves for this. My forefinger did not look all that pretty after this operation. But while completed, well, you have your uh, spring ready here uh, so then it's just to cut it to length and that is typically like a four millimeter long and then just bend the last turn uh, 90 degree and we're ready now these springs can of course be bought as spare parts uh, for cars from your uh, manufacturers but they're kind of pricey and not always in stock so it's uh, it's a really good idea to just buy the wire and wind them once they're completed, you just uh, assemble them between the neem mechanism and the chassis like that. And with that done, well, then we're ready to paint the car. And for that, I'm using an airbrush, which is definitely to be preferred. You can always paintbrush it, but it's uh, really hard to get that perfect uh, surface you probably want with this level of 3D print quality. So these cars were uh, all painted in one color, which makes life easy for me. It's a kind of red brown uh, color all over, except for the buffer, which I will paint black. At the same time, I run uh, through this uh, new Mono 2 printer also cars of other types. This is a box car, which I'm now painting. It's also from Model Railroad 3D. And the purpose is to check the detail and quality level of this printer, because I've been printing these cars before, so I know what they should look like. And besides from this G-style uh, box car, I also printed this iron ore car. This will be number 26. The previous one was printed on the M3 Plus and this one's printed on the Mono 2. So let's check it out through the microscopic view. Well, the one out there who sees the layers of this print can raise your hand. I cannot. It's actually pretty amazing the quality of these, uh, this entry level printer. Yeah, on these round objects underneath the car, you can see layers and look at this iron ore car detailing. You can even see that the bearings here are from the SKF brand and all the, the rivets and the 
hex nuts all visible and here look at this this is a complex two-way curved surface without any layers at all i mean <laughs> this is uh, this is next level when it comes to 3d printing i i'm just stunned so let's um, assemble all of the stakes uh, to the stake car and uh, with that done we can just put a drop of oil in each of uh, the ends of this uh, wheels wheels can be bought at your hobby store uh, they're available for all kind of track systems and as you see i have not prepared or done anything i just put it in and it rolls perfectly and then we snap in the couplings too i've selected Marklin short couplings for this car and then i just paint this little lever here in red and then we're done i was just uh, wanted i wanted to uh, weather the car as well so i put some dark brown uh, um, turpentine based uh, weathering in over the, the acrylic paint here and the reason for not using acrylic is that it will partly dissolve the paint underneath so let's do some cargo as well why not this stack of lumber is found in the lumber mega set uh, the one for six dollars and uh, this one prints in one part so no assembly just uh, some primer added here so what i do next is i mix a yellow with white and a drop of brown to get a kind of fresh wood color and then i paint the entire part with that and then i have the same drill as with the car i apply a wash which is based on odorless turpentine and uh, it's uh, oil artist oil color in brown here and it's just to enhance the edge of all the planks or the lumber pieces uh, so when it has dried i remove the color which has landed on top of the planks with a flat soft brush so then i think uh, well we need some straps uh, we can have different colored straps here uh, by using different type of tape this is a plastic uh, tape from which i cut using a razor blade or a, a, a hobby knife strips like this so all right we can put the car on the tracks and well the couplings fits perfectly with the locomotive and then the cargo fits inside i printed another one it's over here so what we're gonna do now as the first movement on the layout is to transport this one over to the other one and uh, well you see it's uh, actually looks uh, very nice the handles up in front there they're actually just 0.4 millimeter in diameter so not very far from what you can get with the uh, piano wire if you hand mount them so that's the 3d print technology per as per today so let's shunt this one in and see if we can connect the other core in first first trial and yeah seems to be working quite nicely the other one i went a bit heavier on the weathering on that one maybe i will add some more also on the front car here so pretty nice for an entry level printer i think and i think this uh, car and the cargo gives you a flavor of what you can do and have use for uh, when having this printer now let's sort out the technical bits and pieces around a print like this first of all i mix resins this is to get more durable parts than if you just use hard resin i use 30 percent tough and 70 percent abs i shake both bottles a lot uh, for a minute or so and then i mix the proportions into a bowl first and then i pour that mixed resin into the jar now this shaking of the bottles creates a millions and millions of air bubbles in the resin and they need to go away before we start the printer so after pouring i stir a bit to remove the worst bubbles and then i leave it for about half an hour 
Another very important factor for successful printing is to keep the temperature ideally to 25 degrees. If you have lower than 18, nothing will print. I have 22.3 here, so we should be fine. And then, of course, we need 3D models or drawings to put into our 3D printer. And I use these from Model Railroad 3D. They have a catenary system, rail cargo, and this is the cargo we're going to use from the Lumber Mega Set. But you see here, there are others like steel cargo. And uh, they have uh, railroad technical structures like loco shed, water towers, diesel sand your detailing yeah you name it and also some for the railroad station platform sets and also industrial area building exterior it's hvac system this is a new set a high voltage which uh, includes uh, high voltage uh, masts but my idea here to check printer performance is to print both a car so i'm printing this uh, stake car with the lumber cargo so when you click on that we end up on cg trader and you see here this car is eight dollars and then we can print as many as we like at home um, and uh, uh, with the cargo we end up at 14 dollars so very affordable pricing and as i said previously during the tutorial where i'm building it i've been printing 24 of these previously it's the iron ore car for uh, running up in Lapland of the north uh, part of Sweden. So it's easy to compare then this entry level printer output with that. So also this lumber set, we're gonna use uh, that. So now you have a full idea of where all the parts came from. Now, when buying a set of files like this, you need to convert them into printable files for your printer. And to do that, there is a software provided with a printer, which is called Anycubic Photon Workshop. And in the workshop, you can open the 3D models and then it will look like this. So this is uh, the board without supports. And then it's just called board version seven or whatever version it's at. Then it's the supported board, which is adapted for 3D print and tested and evaluated. So it actually works on a range of different printers. So this is the file that we're going to print. Now, in some cases, there are also files which are called underscore all like this one, all version seven. And this one, it's a buffer all. So that means that this file contains all the buffers you need. And in this case, it's to build four cars. So now I would like to say a word about mixing different items in the same print. So in this case, we're mixing the board with buffers and print them at the same time. This might result in lower quality of both items. So if you have problems with that, print just one part at a time. So let's now open this chassis, uh, which we printed in the beginning of this video. So open and then it will open like this. It prints in an angle uh, on supports uh, like it. So Perfect. But then in addition to this, we need to make some settings. Of course, we need to select that we have the Photon Mono 2 printer that is done in the dialog down here. You also need to make some settings for a layer thickness. Uh, the layer thickness should be set to 003 millimeter this is very important because the default setting is 005 and that will give you a lot of layer lines all over your print and you don't want that i found that uh, a good exposure time for this mix of resin 30 percent tough and 70 percent abs like was 2.6 seconds I leave the off time to one second, but I increase the bottom exposure time to 50 seconds. And as you see, when hovering over these figures, you get some information of what the setting will do for you. Besides from these two changes, I also 
change the lift height here the set lift height i changed that from six to seven millimeters and that was both for the bottom layers and the normal layers down here and this is to allow the resin to float in under the print head after each layer and this is most often necessary if you have a lower temperature in the room than 25 degrees so with these uh, settings changed like this we're ready to hit slice and then the software will transform this uh, 3d model in stl format to something our printer understands we save that to usb memory stick that into the uh, 3d printer and then hit print and well that's uh, about it all right so <laughs> i would say pretty sensational uh quality for for that price and, and when it comes to the technical bits and pieces i would say that the 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 most common problem when it comes to print failures is too low ambient temperature and of course like i said you know nothing under 18 degrees uh, celsius then if you have that ambient temperature nothing will really print you can do um uh, settings changes in the settings to overcome some of the problems you get in low temperature but hey why not get a radiator instead and put it in in front of your printer and problem solved so that's that's how i <laughs> did and it works uh, perfectly here so uh, that that would be uh, my my advice and also if you don't like to mix resins like i do here just use the abs like it's uh, excellent resin and uh the, the the pieces will be hard and very good detail uh and you know they they don't break unless you drop them so it's not a, a big deal really thank you very much for watching this tutorial and introduction of the anycubic mono 2 uh, if you have useful information on this channel and uh, regularly watch it, please support the channel uh, from like, you know, one, two dollars per month uh, on Patreon. So get over to Patreon, set up a support account there or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And if you're not yet subscriber, subscribe and enable that little bell and you will get notification once the next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya.